Hello everyone, welcome to Chemistry 101, Summer 2020. I'm Dr Mills, um, your instructor obviously for this semester. I don't really mind what you call me, Dr Mills, Mr Mills, Professor Mills, just not sir. <laughs> okay, I haven't been knighted. <laughs> Although I did work for a knight of the realm once, but that's another story for another day. Okay, now, obviously uh, a little bit different this summer with the uh, stay at home restrictions and everything. As you've probably seen hopefully from my posts already at Canvas, we're tackling the class uh, in a kind of a different way. Uh, obviously you're watching this video so you've hopefully found the YouTube channel. Make sure you uh, subscribe there so you get the uh, you know no notifications when the next video comes out. I'll probably put out a video per day and the notes of the company the videos and uh, you can get those. I'll actually I'll actually link them to Canvas as well. Okay, you can download those at Canvas or at Teams. I'll put them on Teams as well. Okay, so lots of places you can get stuff. Try, uh, I wouldn't advise going to my website. Uh, it's a little bit out of date, as was already noted, uh, because I can only edit that when I'm at JJC. All right, so um, <laughs> interesting times, right? So also, don't forget to... Uh, Log on to Teams, uh, I sent you a link, and there's also a link in the, uh, I think in the announcement section of Canvas. So the bottom line is everything in this course goes through Canvas with links elsewhere. Your first port of call will be announcements and discussion in Canvas. Uh, because it's summer, assignments will come quick and fast. Hang on a minute. It's the first video I've done for a while, I gotta put my uh, timer on because the camera will cut out at 29 minutes. Okay, so hopefully we won't go over 29 minutes uh, today. Anyway, back to it. So again, yeah, so look on uh, look on Teams, join, I think three people as of today, which is the 29th. Uh, three people have joined so far, so that's good. The class doesn't start until the first, of course. Okay, so a couple of things. We kind of went through it already. Okay, I'm trying a new picture-in-picture picture thing, so I'm talking to my GoPro and recording with an overhead camera, and you can see this stuff where I'm building the pen here. Okay, so it's kind of a, <laughs> a new technological frontier for me. Hope, hopefully it works. So yeah, so uh, check my website. Uh, there's a link to that at Canvas. Okay, when you go there, you'll see the syllabus, and I'm going to read through the syllabus today with you, point out changes and things that are the same for the summer. Okay, make sure you join Teams. Office hours will be 9 a.m. on Thursday on Teams. Okay, I'll send you reminders. And office hours, because it's um, an online course essentially, are optional. Okay, so there's no credit for attending an office hour, but it's me with you live on Teams. Okay, so you can ask me any question, we can share screens. It's actually pretty neat. I've had a look at it. So if you've been working on the homework, that's why it's on a Thursday later in the week. So, you know, if you've been working on the homework, you know, you can uh, ask me a question and we can look at that point in the video because I'll have, you know, I can share my screen. We can look at the YouTube site or I can just pull up a whiteboard or even, you know, just talk to you directly through the, through the screen. And um, it's a great place, you know, if you miss kind of missed a, a little bit of detail on the, on the lecture, it's a great place to ask questions. And also, uh, I did get some feedback from students from the end of last semester, and they generally transition pretty well to this style of learning, because the great thing about these videos is you can pause and rewind, which is something you can't make me do in class, right? Okay, so the great thing about videos, yeah, feel free, you know, use the power of the pause, I call it. Feel free to pause it, rewind it, and just go over it a couple of times, make sure you understand the concept. Or, you know, if you, if you uh, really want to ask it in an office hour, you know, just note the time when uh, that happened. I can just forward to that time in the video. So, you know, have, you know, come prepared to office hours with questions. And if you have something about the video in particular, you know, a little kind of the time where that occurs. Okay, so again, office hours, nine o'clock Thursdays on Teams. Please make sure you join Teams via the link. Okay, as soon as you can. All right, mention the YouTube channel. Um, Feel free to look at Chemistry 100 and Chemistry 102 for other things if you wish, but yeah, I'm just going to start putting our Chemistry 101 videos up. This is the first one, really, okay? You did see probably an old introductory video, and in that video I said, hey, next six weeks. It's actually eight weeks. That was for the last six weeks of spring, okay? So it's actually eight weeks. As you can see, I've got more facial hair now and different haircut. <laughs> so yeah, that was a while ago, okay? And of course, read the syllabus. That's kind of our main topic of today. So let's just move to that. Okay, so 
you know, we're required to read through the syllabus with every class, okay? Now, what I advise you to do, if you have another device, even a phone or something, pull up uh, my academic website. Just go to Canvas and click Syllabus. And where it takes you when you press Syllabus is my academic website, okay? And if you go to the academic website, you'll basically get what I've printed here, okay? Now, you're taking this class, Chemistry 101, because it's an IAI articulated class, Illinois Articulation Initiative, right? So Chem 911 is General Chemistry 1, the state over us. It's a common syllabus. So when folks say to me, will my class transfer? Well, yeah, it'll, it's always going to transfer because it's a common syllabus. The, the college, which is, you know, a community college, wouldn't be in business unless our course is transferred, of course. <laughs> okay. All right. So, you know, something we can't do on a piece of paper, but there are links at the top here. Lecture notes, we'll get to that in the next video when I talk about the interactive learning style a little bit. But, um, this is where you would find, if you took my class regularly, the lecture notes. But I'm going to post these for you at Canvas, okay? So you can take a peek there. There's an old calendar. It's out of date. But I'll post, you know, as needed, these uh, lecture notes. Assignments. Doesn't really apply because I'm going to do all your assignments through Canvas. But miscellaneous information is interesting. Old practice exams are there. Uh, periodic table I prefer is there. So that's worth a look, okay? So look here mainly. And uh, you'll find some useful kind of course resources. You can take a peek here, but to be honest, these things you'll see uh, from me on, on Canvas through announcements. All right, obviously me, <laughs> should we be on Canvas? On oh, Canvas? On campus, that's my office. Office phone, that's my cell phone, emergencies only. So I say to students, you know, if you're um, you know, late for a test or something or the alarm clock doesn't go up, just text me, don't phone me, just text me to that number. All right, however, I do prefer Email. Now, the thing about email, uh, Canvas email works great because I've got it linked to several email accounts, right? What you might want to do if you don't check your Canvas email every day, because it's kind of a weird thing to do sometimes, there's, a, there's an option. Go into Canvas and link your email that you prefer to your Canvas email, and then it will just forward. That's what I do, okay? All right, so anything I do on Canvas, because I send emails through Canvas to you guys, you'll see it. All right, website. If you want the direct link, there it is. But again, you just uh, click the, uh, the link at the Canvas site there. All right, now, moving on. So, office hours. Now, this is for face-to-face -face and doesn't really apply. Okay, so it's going to be Thursdays at 9 on Teams. And I'll go as long as you guys are there, okay? However, if, you know, the last person logs out at 9.30, I'm not going to wait for others to join, okay? So try and join at 9 and then stay as long as you wish. But as soon as everyone's gone off, I'm going to go off as well, okay? All right. Textbook. Hopefully, you've been able to get a copy of Tro. Honestly, though, it's not super essential. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's not really super essential given my style of learning, okay? We'll talk about that style of learning shortly, but you can you can get a lot out of the uh, the online notes, and if you want to practice questions, yeah, the textbook's good, okay? So I only really have the, the textbook for questions, all right? So one of the truths of chemistry is that the more we practice, the better you get, like so many things in life, okay? So the more homework you do, the better your chemistry solving ability becomes. And, you know, but there's many places you can get homework. You can get the ACS study guide, which is highly recommended. Maybe you've seen that. And you can get the textbook, of course. Although, honestly, any textbook will do. Just get one off Amazon, eBay, and just, you know, when you're... Because the, the chapters are virtually the same in every book, questions are all pretty much the same, too. Okay, so my goal is to save you guys money. So I don't mind what version of the textbook you use, even if you use a textbook, okay? You may want to go and look for, um, what's it called? Um, OpenStax. OpenStax uh, free downloads. Uh, that's a very good resource, too. It's free. We've probably checked your reference. I don't actually do this this uh, prereq check, but uh, you have to have simple English and math, and to have you know obviously two semesters of high school chemistry, or taking chemistry 100, or its equivalent at JJC or elsewhere. Okay, careful there. If you don't have those requirements, you may get dropped. So you might want to kind of drop me a line and just ask me if you've got any questions on that. Okay. We're not on campus, so I'm not going to drop anybody, <laughs> okay? And if anybody drops in the first couple of days and anybody asks to get in, I will add a couple of people within the two, two or three days if people drop, but I can't exceed the class limit. Okay, so <clears throat> background and content. 
it's the usual syllabus okay so this is probably somewhat similar to you've had in high school okay or if you've had chemistry 100 somewhat similar so those are the chapters we'll be doing in the book okay those are the chapters we'll be doing in the book okay now the main goal of a chemistry course is to teach you chemical solving problems right or so let me rephrase that chemical problem solving skills okay at this point in my lecture i'd ask the class hey who's a chemistry major and one person out of 48 would raise their hand and then we asked the question well why are you here and it turns out that chemistry is a prereq for pretty much everything not because of the content but because of the problem solving skills you acquire while taking a chemistry course okay so most of you Hello, <laughs> most of you out there, I understand, aren't here for, here for the chemistry. You're here because it's a prereq. That's okay. All right. Now, bearing that in mind, what I try and do is I try and tell a story. Okay. Make it interesting. Make it more everyday life. So, you know, why does sugar dissolve in coffee, for example? Why is dry ice called dry ice? Why do we put salt on the roads in winter? All these things can be answered with chemistry okay so i kind of weave a story together which kind of makes it kind of flow and it makes more sense on kind of an everyday level so those folks who aren't kind of here for the <laughs> the, the pure chemistry so to speak don't worry about it okay no one is really okay so again you're here to learn problem solving skills and i like to do that by telling a story i bring in lots of personal stories and other details from everyday life okay so yeah technically these are the, the chapters we're going to cover Okay, but be, uh, be aware that just because it's week one, it's not necessarily chapter one, okay? As we'll see in the next video, when we actually look at our note packets, the chapter reading assignments are posted there, as are the homeworks, okay? But we'll talk about that when we get to the first packet, which will be the next video. All right, so I do set homework, okay? So if you have the book, homework is set, but I do not grade it, I don't collect it, okay? you're grown right the more homework you do the better your school will be and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna kind of monitor that okay i'm not gonna police that okay but just know the more problems you solve the better your score okay and homework is basically practice all right and she's probably a good idea to talk about cyclic well we'll do it next time i have a thing called the cyclic learning strategy which we'll talk about all right so there is background reading and homework, which is kind of, again, uh, listed on our assignment packets, which we'll talk about next video. And again, I don't collect the homework. All right, now labs. Labs are a bit weird this semester. Hopefully you've, uh, I should add that to your list of things to do, right? Let me jump around a little bit. I sent you a link to the lab site okay so you have to sign up for labs please make sure you do that and you know probably the next video will be a lab video okay telling you how to do the first lab first lab actually is going to be pretty straightforward it's just a <laughs> ironically a safety video not that we're in a room with chemicals but it is part of the syllabus so we'll look at that just a little bit just to make you aware of safety in a chemistry lab all right so the schedule Next announcement. Look for an announcement or maybe a discussion. I'll actually post the lab schedule today. The day, today is the 29th of May. I'll probably post today at some point. Okay. All right. So let's just recap. You're going to use Canvas to look at announcements and get assignments from the discussion area. Okay. Those assignments will be posted as links within the discussion area okay so pretty much everything goes through discussion okay important stuff announcements important stuff email all right so lab you know obviously we're not on campus so this doesn't really apply okay but this does okay you're going to have to send me your labs as and i mentioned this in the first announcement as either a pdf or a word document okay as an email attachment so you've got to be able to either edit a word document okay or edit a pdf file all right now you can do that how you wish i've given you some tips in the announcement okay but you've got to be able to return one file not a list of pages no no not a list of pages one page all right or one document rather with multiple pages that's fine okay all right so one document pdf or doc 
for each assignment. And it's going to be, you know, the same old technique I use for late work as in the regular semester, 10% off per day late. Okay. And there'll be kind of reminders, a to-do list, if you like, on the, on the discussion board. Okay. You need 50% in lab to pass. Everybody gets that if they keep handing them in. Okay. People get close to not passing by not getting 50% for lab when they don't hand the labs in. So make sure you hand something in every week and you know, that'll take care of itself. All right. We'll talk about lab safety rules. It's not really that <laughs> important right now because we're working from home, but uh, there are some important lab safety rules. Okay. Now you may want to know how I grade my class. Well, of course you do, right? Okay. So this is uh, you know, should we be in the regular semester? I'd ask the class an interesting question. How have you been graded before? Okay. And there are two answers. Okay. There's the criterion assessment, which is 90% is an A, 80% or higher is B, 70 is a C, etc. Well, if we did that in physics, anybody taking a physics class? Some physics class, the average score might be 64. <laughs> Everyone gets a D? No. What's the other way of grading a curve, right? So the top 15% of students get A's, the next 25 get B, stuff like that. And chemistry, you know, it's interesting. You can choose either one, but I think the best way to do it is to choose both. Okay. And this is how I do it. Okay, so with a large group of people, you know, anything over about 12 statistically usually works. Okay, so this is your score for the semester and we work out what the score, maximum score is in a moment. Okay, so there's zero and there's the max score, right? And there's always kind of a normal bell-shaped curve, right? And, you know, that's the number of students with that score, right? So the smack bang middle of that distribution, if you remember your statistics, is the mean or the average, right? That's the average. All right. So statistically, half the students are over here, half the students over here. I set this class average to a C plus. Okay. Interesting. So that means if you're one point above average, guess what grade you're getting? That's a B, right? Because the C plus is right on the line between a, a C and a B, right? And that's an A. And then, hey, if you're kind of a little bit below average, you get the C, right? And if you're like lagging behind, you get the D. All right. Now, if I apply a pure normal distribution of scores, yeah, people are going to get these. Hmm. That's not so good. This is where I put a line in the sand. This is criterion based assessment. So that line in the sand, the CD border is set at 55%. Okay. So here's the bottom line. If you're getting 55% or better, and you can look on canvas for your grade, it gives you a running total of your grades. Okay. If you're getting 55% or better, you're passing. Okay. And then, you know, you can look uh, for the numbers here, top 22% approximately, and then 28 and 35. These are the kind of the percent areas here. Okay. So you can read about it here. So above 55 is a pass. Let's see or better is a pass in my book. Okay. And then, you know, the, the A, B's and C's above 55 are, I feel like curved, if that makes sense. Okay. Now a little bit different. Okay. What we're going to do in terms of graded work, we're going to do a quiz in week two and then an exam in week four, quiz in week six, exam, oh, six and week eight. Okay. So every other week is a quiz or an exam. Okay. The quizzes are worth 25. Exams are worth 150. Labs all together are 150. So if we do some math, what we got 150, 150, 300, 450, 500. It's out of 500 points this summer. Okay. So, you know, look down here, you can change that. We do one more quiz and other things. So it's out, it's out of 500 points, right? Let me just check that. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's the reason it's out of 500 and not 740. We're missing a quiz and we're missing a final. There is no um, ACS final exam because that just doesn't work from home. Okay. So no final exam, no cumulative final exam. So quiz, midterm one, quiz, midterm two. Those are modular. So what we cover up to that point and kind of between that point, if that makes sense. All right. Okay. This talks about the S ACS, you know, we're not studying for that final, so it's not that relevant really. Okay. But if you do have access to an ACS book <clears throat> and you know, I really recommend it because 
It has all the good questions you'll need for if you're going to do an MCAT, a PCAT, any kind of cat, Thundercat, <laughs> that's a joke, right? Any kind of, kind of uh, pre-med, pre-farm type uh, chemistry questions, that's where they get them, okay? So it's good to practice from there. That would have been our final ACS standardized final, but not this time. Okay, uh, in the regular semester, I you know, like to give out extra credit. I actually love to give out extra credit. I, I think it's uh, good to reward effort. Um, and I'll do that this semester too, but something slightly different, okay? So none of this really applies because we're not in a classroom, okay? But I will do lots of extra credit, okay? So extra credit on videos. So if you watch the videos in the allotted time, there may be the occasional extra credit homework question, okay? So there might be extra credit homework, right? Me selling stuff on the videos. And if you watch them before the video, kind of reminder date, get it to me, you get extra credit. I love extra credit. Okay. Research. Uh, <laughs> I do teach uh, a research class, okay? My passion is undergraduate research. I'm actually helping the USGS look at the Asian carp problem right now. Uh, that's a longer story. Feel free to send me a, an email if you're interested, okay? All right. How it all works, again, we're not in a classroom, so this doesn't really apply. But um, the bottom line is this, okay? If I, um, so I can find my, uh, yeah, you can read through it, okay? But the bottom line is this, the more questions you practice, the better your score is gonna be, okay? So the notes are set up to, fo to focus on problem solving skills, okay? so. If you can, download and print the notes when I post them, okay? And as I go through the videos, there'll be time to pause and you actually solve the problem yourself and then press play and you'll see me going through it, okay? So that's, in my opinion, that's the best way to do this is to pr print a hard copy of the notes and there's gaps where you fill out. I call them the interactive note packets. Again, talk about it in the next video, okay? So if you're capable, Yes, print the notes and then fill them out as you would be in class, okay? If you don't have access to a printer, and I know not everyone does, you can fill them out typing, okay? You can fill them out typing, or if you've got a nice tablet with a stylus, you can actually fill them out freehand. If you have like Adobe uh, Reader, I think it is, you can actually download my PDFs and actually fill in by hand the answers. It's, it's almost like you're taking virtual notes, okay? I don't like that so much, but um, you know, if, if it works for you, good. All right, miss work again, 10% per day for miss work, but there are hard deadlines, okay? So if you miss an assignment um, turn in on discussion, it's, it's a hard deadline, so you, you don't get any points if you miss the deadline, okay? So be careful, I'd give you plenty of time to kind of hand stuff in or send stuff to me, make sure you don't miss those deadlines. All right, okay. I don't think you're gonna be late, <laughs> okay? All right, so. Oh, here's my final advice, okay. So I was trying to mention this earlier. So my goal as a chemistry instructor is to help you pass the class, right? And to do this, the simplest advice I can give you is this. To learn chemistry, you gotta do chemistry, okay? Don't fall in the trap of thinking you can read the book, okay? You can get away with that with rote memorization classes. I'm not looking at any class in particular. Sociology right but you can get by by cramming the night before memorizing a few facts the thing with chemistry is every question is different you can't memorize the answer because it's never the same answer okay you've got to get good at solving the problems you do that you'll become a good chemist and that's why people think chemistry is sometimes hard take it from me chemistry isn't hard chemistry is different okay if you get into the habit of thinking of chemistry as being different. I'm thinking about things in a different way. I'm using problem solving skills, not just memorizing stuff and copying stuff down. Okay, if you think about it in that way, chemistry is not so bad, okay? And that's true for pretty much all the kind of physical sciences, okay? It's a different way of thinking. It's different. It's not hard, okay? Think about that. Okay, we'll stop there and I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.